Access of Lords, any upgrade with the name Lord in its name, <laughs> in its title, whatever it may be. We're going to be having Lords complete chimps on resort. Using the Glaive Lord, the Pirate Lord, and the Wizard Lord Phoenix. And we'll be deploying them down in that order and getting them up to tier 5 in that order. That clears up round 7. Yeah, some of these early rounds are going to be a piece of cake here. But then the, uh, the later rounds, still got a feeling it's going to be a little bit of a breeze, honestly, when it comes to this particular tower combination of the Glaive Lord, the Pirate Lord, and the Wizard Lord Phoenix. Despite the fact the... Uh, the Pirate Lord itself has been nerfed in Update 41. It's still going to be a bit of a powerhouse. However, unlike the Pirate Lord, the Glaive Lord actually in some ways has been reworked to a point where it's been buffed. So rather than the Glaive Lord projectiles that shoots out having a maximum distance in which it can actually go through, it's been set to max whatever max is but it just enables it to travel it for a far longer duration of time and then the only requirement then is going off the screen or having its uh, pierce capped also glaive ricocheted 650 it's a blast to get honestly for such a cheap tower it really has a lot of pierce behind it which i love obviously we go bottom cross path with the top path because then we can actually do something against light balloons and it does double damage as well. We want the crow's nest so that we can pop the camo green on round 24. And other camos from that point onward. So in some way, all three of these towers will be able to have camo popping potential. Although the only thing that pops camos when it comes to the boomerang monkey here is the orbiting glaives around the glaive lord itself. Speaking of round 24... Exterminate! Even the balloons themselves are lords as they wield their top hats here. Now let's put down our third tower, the Wizard Monkey. I like putting them here so that the water fire is always here. It has a chance of not hitting the balloon, not just once, but let's say one, two, three, four times. We have a mini ritual circle here <laughs> with the fire being the place where the demon spawns from. More glaives very soon. What are we going to be going for next? I think we're going to go with the dragon's breath next. Although, should I have gotten that before going tier 4 here? No, I think cannon ship will do us, do us well when it comes to the round 40 Moab on that round. No, we can actually get Dragon's Breath before round 40, which is nice. And Dragon's Breath also enhances our Fireballs and our Wall of Fire, respectively. Fireball, not so great, but the Wall of Fire will take that enhancement any day of the week. Whether it enhances its damage or enhances its duration. In comparison to yesterday's video on my insane challenge to try and complete a game of geared on chimps. This is pretty swell at the moment. No stress whatsoever. Just a nice, fun, sort of relaxing time on Balloons Tower Defense 6. But I have to say that... Videos like that can kind of root out the weeds in the community, as in the people who think that any kind of map is easy. And it's like, okay, thank you very much. Now I know who to either ignore or just troll around, honestly. Because it's so aggravating at times. Just seeing, let's say, a really difficult map get completely nuked to the ground by people who either don't know what we're talking about because they've probably never played the game in their life and think that everything is easy to them because because everything is easy in their life or they are a top-notch player that has no idea of what it was like to be something in which was not a top-notch status so sometimes a little bit of reflection is very important in one's life not obviously a lot of people know how to do that because they think that they were born perfect from day one but sometimes you need to do a little bit of self-reflection in life to see where you come from because everyone has an origin story and everybody has downfalls has weaknesses but then again those same people who think they don't have any weaknesses well that is a weakness of yours 
better to the fact that you think that you don't have a weakness. Okay, all of them are now at tier 4. When we get to tier 5, they go from nearly no chance to absolutely no chance. So like my experience with geared is going to be different from your experience of geared. My experience with Glacial Trails, which is barely any by the way, is going to be different from your experience of Glacial Trails. My experience with Ouch is different from yours. And I think people need to realize that difficulty is both subjective, but it also can be statistically analyzed to where how many players can do a black border on an expert map. There are some expert maps which are easier than others. So let's say Dark Castle and Infernal, we can all agree is, or are, sorry, the two easiest expert maps in the game. But does that make them easy per se? Far from it. But it's a fact that people's perception of difficulty is so warped sometimes to the point where anything can be considered as easy and they have no self-reflection of why they once came when it comes to the fact of have been able to succeed the first time because they think that their first time is their successful time therefore every single time is their successful time also i forgot to mention since we're doing lords the axis of lords i'm going to give these moabs an old an old timely coat um you are not you're not supposed to be puff officious thank you very much hold on yeah you two should not be enabled no, I'm not redoing the video just so that the Moabs have the correct skin from the get-go, okay? <laughs> Insane mode unlocked. Let's use the hook because we've got nothing else to use it on at this given point in time. Round 63, not an issue whatsoever with our current setup. The Moab Glaives is pretty good against ceramics. Like, you want this for ceramic cleanup and now there's that glaive lord anything that enters his orbit will be de-orbited and de-existent fied however you want to call it we move from existence on first day the 14th of march 2024 because at some point in the future someone's gonna read so watch this video like in a year's time i think what is he blattering on about I'm going to see a doctor about my tinnitus condition at the moment. It is not nice to hear whatsoever. It's not nice to hear a constant grasshopper noise in your ear all of the time. And it essentially is like if you just suck two grasshoppers into my ears and they're just making that constant noise going on, that constant rear ringing. It's like the only thing that I could really compare it to is grasshoppers because they make that same noise all the time. And sometimes it keeps me up at night, which is so annoying. I wish I could get a doctor's appointment sooner, but then that would mean going private, which I'd rather not do. But sometimes for the sake of your health, sacrifices need to be made. Otherwise, there'll be more sacrifices down the road. But at the same time, it's not life-threatening, but it definitely feels neurologically threatening the later that I am. Um, try and do something about it because it is a constant annoyance to be honest and sometimes it brings about headaches as well because you're listening to this constant noise going on all the time in your ears we're next going to go with the pirate lord a it provides us more firepower for a cheap price and b we need some build up when it comes to the wizard or phoenix otherwise we won't be able to get this 54 thousand that we need uk doctors how long can you wait for U.S. doctors, how expensive will that be? Canadian doctors, do you want to die? I don't know where that meme comes from, but I do remember it. I do remember seeing it somewhere <laughs> around 76. But yeah, the UK, UK sorry, used to be in a much better place when it comes to the waiting time when it comes to appointments. But I'd rather not get into it really, but I just think our government is just doing a, a stupid job when it comes to everything, when it comes to just running the country and it's been doing so for more than a decade now 78 all of <laughs> if they're not instantaneously popped we're down to red balloons thank you very much glaive lord so we've got 160,000 with glaive lord we've got 56,000 with monkey pirates that was given point in time and we've got 61,000 with the summon phoenix wizard no, I'm not renaming you Harry on the Potter again. You're just not the correct wizard to do it in, okay? 
Do you remember seeing Harry Potter casting out fire all the time? No. Let's get the Pirate Lord now. We're not going to use this hook ability until round 80 because I don't want to wait for that ZMG if I don't have to. We've got more than enough firepower here to deal with these few balloons here. And there, there goes round 80. I thought I pressed you. I guess I didn't press you in the correct place. Let's wait for the fortified BFBs before using the hook ability. Let's see one. We'll just use it now, actually. So that should leave with a few left. Yeah, we left with two fortified BFBs left at around of 82, which is why we delayed our usage of it so that we can target the fortified ones. Because it doesn't matter because this thing's power is based on what they are rather than how much they have. So damage is not a thing when it comes to the Pirate Lord's ability. Obviously two hooks are used when it comes to ZMGs. One hook is used for MOABs, DDTs and BFBs. Let's hook those in. Round 85, swallow up the first ZMG. Can we swallow up the second one? Looks like it's coming back pretty quickly. And Kapuya. Swallowing up round 86. Let's swallow up these ZMGs or as many as we can. We can swallow up two of them before we start doing meaningful damage to the ZMGs. Swallow up that one. And just leave the rest of these to our default attacks outside of our abilities. These ones though we will use the ability for. For some what reason. I don't even know what I just said there, but I said something okay. See, the best you could do with a Pirate Lord when it comes to its ability is one ZMG and one BFB. Or, in other cases, three DDTs. Because DDTs are bloody annoying. There goes round 89. Now, first encounter with DDTs. How are we going to fare? Yoink! Progressing towards the third and final Lord of this axis. And we will have ourselves a completed scenario. Grab one of those ZMGs in, which would also hook in a fortified Moab. Use some of Phoenix just for a little bit of cleanup. We're not going to use this until round 93 when three of the six DDTs spawn in. Let's see. Yeah, six DDTs on this round, and we have to use the, uh, the Grave Lord and the Summon Phoenix in order to clear up the DDTs, because we can't rely on hot grapes in order to pop DDTs unless you think so otherwise. Also, I've heard where the Wizard Lord Phoenix's Phoenix ends, that's where the next one is going to summon, which is pretty interesting if you really think about it. Because that could be the difference between victory and defeat in certain scenarios, but depending on where the Wizard Lord Phoenix's Phoenix is at the any given point in time. Oh, no wonder this thing is such an OP tower with so many 2TC entries. Like, look at all those fireballs. I think they have nerfed it so that the, this thing's breath is fire rather than normal. Or is it the ability Phoenix that goes from normal to fire? Sorry, uh, normal to fire. Sorry, not fire to normal. Fire to normal is a buff. Anything that goes by the normal damage type is just the best damage type because it means it doesn't have any weaknesses. Round 97, absorb one of them in. I don't mean to use both abilities. I meant to just press one, but I guess this is where we're going at at this given point in time. But I don't care because we've got ourselves a very delightful end to this route. Round 98, just deploy all of the damage that we need gosh it'll be embarrassing if we lose right out now i'm very good for jinxing myself but <laughs> it'll be embarrassing if we lose right about now round 99 and let's just summon it let's not take any chances just summon it do some damage against the bad and we're gonna have ourselves a nice oldly time moab time on this uh, on this very day here I only ever see old timely skin applied, and it's just so because it's just like, well, it's not bad, but it's just a dull skin to apply throughout because it's the same thing as the regular skin, but just, um, just, <laughs> just give them the black and white filter and some slight shading changes. And there we go, folks. That is the axis of lords. Let's see how our towers did 667,750. 
sorry, 767,000. I got that mixed up there. 758,000 and 512,000. Well, that's to be expected since these two were at the majority of the time on their tier 5, respectively. So, thank you all so much for watching. This has been the Axes of Lords with the Glaive Lord, the Pyra Lord, and the Wizard Lord Phoenix. I should put Phoenix at the very end there. Thank you all so much. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to do that now, actually. Uh, can we put Phoenix in? No, we cannot put Phoenix in. Oh, well. Oh, well, at least we're able to name our, <laughs> our Archmage Harry on the Potter. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what other kind of videos you'd like to see me do in the future. Thank you for the suggestion of Axis of Lords. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, everybody.